Hello, I'm the critic. I remembered so you don't have to. Today we're going to talk about Hanna-Barbera. Why? Because I just feel like it. Not a review, just a talk. Technically a review. But what I used to like is to find forgotten, misplaced, or old cartoons. Unlike the Hammer Show, the MC Hammer Show, Hammer Man, that's supposed to be lost. There were good cartoons out there. Some of them didn't even have to try. Now, some of these cartoons have not aged well, but I'm going to say my top 10. Yes, this is a top 10 list of my favorite cartoons. And there will be just no flashes. You'll just look them up in the page below. Number 10. Higglytown. This was a Disney Junior... Nick Jr. show. This was a Nick Jr. show when Nick Jr. was still a thing on Noggin. That was before Disney bought Nick. Ish. It's complicated. I was born in 2002. And this came out in 2004. <clears throat> yeah, try to get that one out of your head. So, yeah. A couple of things. This was a show about anthropomorphic Jap dolls that you would use to open. You know, those ones that would pop up one thing or another. Yeah. It was one of those kind of shows. But it worked for its time. It hasn't really aged well. And it's not one of those shows that should. It was something that was remembered. And then, poof. But that said, number nine. The Wiggles. Now, I said this was my sh my favorite shows that I remember. Why? Because I just remember this show for... Well, I just remember it. And I remember they even made a creepy stop-motion movie thing. I believe. I don't know. Things happen. So... On to number eight. Tom and Jerry. Okay, now here's... I'm going to explain. This... The first two were from when I was a kid. Uh, to give you numbers, about 2003 to 2005. Now we're going into my kind of teen era... Tween eras from when I was five to eight. So that'd have to be... 2009 all the way to 2011. I believe... I don't know, you do the math. Tom and Jerry, I found this one late. When they were still playing when they were still playing the old shorts on the on Cartoon Network, you know, when Cartoon Network was still good. I love these shorts because they would always play a forgotten old cartoon that they made. Something that Hanna Barbera or Tex Avery made. And Tex Avery He was funny. Now, to number seven. I'm sorry, six. I believe. Oh, I just called seven and six. Number six would have to be... Animaniacs. And Batman. Now, this is from... Now, that one was from when I... Kind of got into what I liked. And the Animaniacs kind of helped me there. So this is from 2011, picking up. All the way to 2013. Now let's just get out with the first one first. Why did I love it? Well, I liked it. Now, the reason why I liked Animaniacs was because it was just something I've never saw. And the reason why I kind of got that was something I didn't say in, in the other, in, in number seven, was the Looney Tunes kind of helped me. Part of my childhood, I have to thank to the Looney Tunes. Because they made me show that cartoons can be funny and violent and 
have fun. So why did I pick Animaniacs? Because I kind of liked it. It had the same kind of humor. And it was the only thing that they did in the 80s that could do the junior thing and make it work. Because they weren't based off anything. They were just kids. That's it. Now, to number five. Beetlejuice, the cartoon. Now we're getting into, like, 2011 to, like, 2012 material. Why Beetlejuice? <clears throat> it was a little kid show that, for those of you who don't like gross-out humor, just things plain sick, don't watch Beetlejuice. But how did it shape me? <coughs> well, it did what number four... It did wrong what number four did right. Now with this one, it got painfully annoying because everything he said was literal translation. Yes, literal translation. Not lost in translation, literal translation. Number four, The Mask. Based on the Jim Carrey movie, this show, although keeping it for kids and nothing like the comic that it was based on, it did what Beetlejuice, it did, it did right what Beetlejuice did wrong. It kept it funny and only got tired out on season four. Unlike Beetlejuice had 150 episodes. Yeah. Now, why did I do top ten to begin with? Just felt like it. Now, to number three. Batman the Animated Series. This was what I considered the golden age of my se of my show, of what I felt. Batman the Animated Series was when I found out I could do anything. Yeah. A little cartoon show made in the 80s. Now to number two. I'm sorry, number three. The 60s. Now the 60s Batman was kind of where I got all my humor from. Very funny, very comedic, very Adam Westy, very nothing like Batman. But it worked for its day. Now, number two, The Super Friends. Yeah, I'm kind of going back because The Super Friends was kind of what paved my jot on um, how I am today. If I wasn't for that, I wouldn't be talking to you people right now because I didn't have a lot of courage. And just because I said that, let's just get to number one, Courage the Cowley Dog. Now, I may be afraid of the show, like heck, but I'm not as afraid as I would be if I didn't watch it. What I mean by that is, if I never saw Courage, it would have never let me saw Batman the Animated Series, and I never would have watched the Animaniacs, and so on and so forth. The 60s show was kind of what gave me the courage to do things. But Courage the Cowley Dog, on the other hand, was the thing that kind of started my entire mission of, in life. So without courage, I probably still have no idea what I'm going to do with my life. But now I do, a YouTube show. That was my top 10 shows that I remember from when I was a child. I'm the critic, I remember it so you don't have to.